I'm Julia Zabo, also known as Pet Reporter, and I am the Living with Dogs columnist for Dogster.com. I've actually written six books, and I'm hard at work on my next one. It will be about dogs. That's as much as I can say right now. <laughs> I love dogs, and I think nobody's life is complete without one. So I'm here to tell you about a variety of different dog breeds that might suit your lifestyle. I hope you'll adopt one soon. The Corgi is a fabulous little dog. It's a herding breed. And pretty much everyone knows by now that Queen Elizabeth II loves this breed. You basically, when you see photos of her happy, it's when she's with her corgis. Her dad, King George, um, had corgis. Uh, th that was their family pet. And the wonderful movie, The King's Speech, which just won all the Academy Awards a movie could win, uh, actually shows the corgis just in passing, but you know, you can't not show the corgis when you talk about the royal family. And um, I think that's definitely what's driven up the popularity of the breed, but honestly, with or without Queen Elizabeth, the breed would be very popular. They're super cute. They come in two kinds, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi and the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The difference is that the Pembroke has no tail and the Cardigan has a tail. Otherwise, they're the same, adorable little dogs. Again, though, they love to have a job to do, so try to give them something to do, even if it's just, you know, aerobic games of fetch. That's a job, and it's a fun one, and it's fun for you, it's fun for the dog. They're short-legged dogs, so maybe they're not your best running partner if you're a triathlete, uh, but they're super great companions to have around. Pitbulls are my favorite kind of dog. Pitbulls are extraordinary to me, but unfortunately, a lot of the world really doesn't like pit bulls. The, this dog is the most feared and irrationally um, loathed and legislated against dog literally in the world. Tragically, the reason why so many people have been able to successfully misuse and exploit and abuse pit bulls is because pit bulls are so loyal to their owner. If the owner is a criminal who wants to do bad things, Sadly, the dog doesn't want to do those things, but because the owner wants to do it, he wants to please the owner, so he'll do it. But if the owner is a really great person who wants to go to hospitals and visit old people and young people who need a smile, um, they'll do that gladly. That's their favorite thing to do. Um, they will do search and rescue work. They will just be your friend. They will come running with you. They'll sit on the sofa with you. A lot like mutts, they're very, very versatile and adaptable. In a weird way, they kind of are mutts because they're a hybrid of terrier and bulldog. Uh, the complete name is American Pit Bull Terrier. I never said pit bulls are totally easy dogs to have. They're very, very strong. Um, they can be very strong-willed. You have to be firm but gentle. And um, you have to show the dog that you're the top dog, you're the boss, and so he listens to you. But you also, you don't want to be rough with him. You don't want to use cruel training methods, no shock collars, none of that. You just want to harness that energy for good. Believe it or not, in World War I, pit bulls were a symbol of American strength and um, and patriotism. So here we have this dog with this incredible history, incredible legacy. Let's appreciate him. Let's go to our local animal shelter, which sadly is like as much as 90% pit bulls. And, you know, give him a home. The poodle is actually one of my favorite all-time breeds. And a lot of people dismiss the poodle flat out as a foo-foo dog or a frivolous, you know, not serious dog. But I have news for everyone. The Poodle is a very serious dog. Um, he's an athlete, he's gorgeous, he's super intelligent. He is really one of the most intelligent dog breeds out there. Him and the Border Collie are the tops. Ironically, when we think of the Poodle being in the circus, wearing a tutu and standing on her hind legs and twirling, um, we forget the fact that she could learn these tricks and this repertoire um, just proves how intelligent she is. So let's not blame her just because some not very nice people put a tutu on her. Poodles are incredibly athletic. They love the water. Um, 
In fact, the show cut that we all kind of make fun of, where it looks like topiary and he's shaved in the back with pom-poms, um, this was actually designed to um, help them be more aerodynamic in the water. The other great thing about poodles is that people who have allergies to most dogs tend to be able to tolerate poodles a lot better because their hair is closer to human hair than to classic dog fur. One of my favorite all-time historical figures, John Steinbeck, the writer, wrote a very, very famous book called Travels with Charlie in Search of America. And in this book, he basically drove across the country with his standard poodle, Charlie, and he had very, very trenchant insights on the different pockets of American culture that he saw through his poodle's eyes. You know, let's remember that when we think of a poodle because poodles are cool. The pug is one of the most fetishized breeds of dog ever. Um, they, they're reproduced in little figurines and um, uh, in paintings and sculpture and they're just, they're incredibly appreciated. Some very, very famous people have owned these little dogs um, who of course come in both tan and black. Everyone from Josephine of like Napoleon fame to um, the Duchess of Windsor and the Duke of Windsor were both very huge pug people. Queen Victoria had numerous pugs and loved them so much. Um, and in fact, they were, you know, when she was on her deathbed, she kind of patted the bed because she wanted her doggies next to her. Um, so, you know, they're just very endearing, adorable little creatures. They can be very strong-willed though, so don't make a mistake that just because they're small and portable, that they're pushovers. Uh, so they need to be trained the same way any other dog does. Also, they have very sensitive skin, so you want to use only, you know, chemical-free, nice, sensitive shampoos on them, because otherwise they're going to develop itchiness and, you know, skin itch, skin irritation. And a lot of Americans love them, and it's not the royal aspect, it's because of the movies Men in Black. Um, uh, those movies really sort of made a huge superstar out of Frank the Talking Pug. And, um, you know, it, I think the expressiveness on the pug's face really lends itself to a movie like that and, and is uh, part of why those movies were so successful. The Rottweiler is an amazing dog, and actually, if you want to be really technical, because it is a German breed, you, the W is pronounced as a V, like Victor, so it's Rottweiler. There is actually a statue in Rottweil, Germany, of a Rottweiler, a beautiful dog. Um, these dogs were originally used as working dogs, and they still are used as working dogs, but this is a great example of a dog whose job has evolved to meet you know, and match what humans need. In the old days, the Rottweiler was actually used as a drover. They actually drove cattle and other livestock to, um, for, for the people who were butchering them. They also accompanied butchers to market and they, the money was often tied around their neck uh, because who's gonna mess with a Rottweiler? But in reality, they're actually very cuddly, wonderful dogs. The Rottweiler now works in search and rescue. They do therapy work. They are service dogs also because they're very strong. They pull things. Um, you know, they're, they're just amazing all around strong working dogs and they like to have a job. Similar to a pit bull, a Rottweiler really does need a strong hand, a strong but gentle hand uh, in training. That's very important for a dog like a Rottweiler so that he or she doesn't become aggressive. So I've gotten to know many of them. I love this breed. They make wonderful dogs and um, I, I think they're beautiful. Just the, the black glossy coat with the brown markings. They often have little eyebrows and sometimes when you see mutts um, with eyebrows, it's pretty, pretty easy to figure out that there's some Rottweiler in the lineage. The Shih Tzu is a beautiful little dog. Uh, he's actually one of the most ancient breeds in China, and he was bred to resemble the little lions, or big lions, in Asian art. So he looks like a little lion. 
A lot of little dogs are basically bred to be companions. They don't have a job per se, other than to keep your lap warm and to cuddle you and to give kisses and receive kisses from you. So the Shih Tzu is a perfect example of this. And he has the little pushed in face and the big eyes. And there's something so compellingly adorable about this creature that it just makes you want to do nice things for him or her. And it's interesting because there are two entrepreneurs in America who both have Shih Tzus and both did nice things for them. One is a dentist here in New York. Her name is Dr. Jennifer Jablo. And she's huge into dog rescue and animals in general. And her two little Shih Tzus inspired her to create a dental pen to keep their teeth white and clean because Shih Tzus, like a lot of small breeds, have problems with dental disease. They're very prone to dental disease because of the way their mouths are so small and so pushed in. So um, here she created this thing called Pawfect Smile. And then on the West Coast, there's another entrepreneur who has a Shih Tzu who literally almost died from dental disease. And so she was motivated to create another dental product called Healthy Mouth. I guess what's interesting about Shih Tzus is that they inspire their owners to do great things. So I guess you could call the Shih Tzu a career coach. It's funny, they are also known as the chrysanthemum dog, but I think career coach is more accurate. The Weimaraner, or if we're speaking German, the Weimaraner, is a German breed um, who was bred or created to accompany aristocrats on the hunt for large game. So he's really, he's a nobleman's dog and he kind of knows it. He carries himself with great poise and dignity and he really looks like a prince among dogs. This dog recently has gotten a lot of publicity thanks to the American artist William Wegman. And uh, he's a dog artist, as most people know, and uh, his passion is photographing his own Weimar honors. Uh, in various poses, uh, kind of anthropomorphizing them, making them look really human, and, and it, they're just really cute, cute pictures. Weimaraners, despite their very dignified appearance, uh, have a streak of clown in them, and they love to play, they love to be hammy, and uh, this is something that Mr. Wegman really, really makes use of in his work, and I've seen him with his dogs, and I've seen him train the camera on his dogs, and they just love to perform. I've never seen anything like it. It's really like, almost like poodles in the circus. They, they love to please their owner. The Weimaraner, kind of, if you ask me, has the potential to be the next Snoopy, you know, to be this kind of dog that appears on your kids' bed sheets and your pillows and your home decor, and, and it's just a very cheerful image, um, a, a very noble looking dog, yet also a really floppy, cute hound. If you're in the market for a dog, you couldn't do better than to go to your local animal shelter and get yourself a mutt. Mutts are incredible dogs because they are so versatile and so eager to please. They're obviously mixed breed dogs, they're hybrids, they're the product of random breeding back and forth, up and down. And so because they weren't bred for one specific purpose, they're not showing intense behaviors like some terriers do, some hounds, some very specific groups of purebred dogs, which are bred for those behaviors, to hunt, to, to go after rats. So um, when those purebred dogs get stuck in an apartment, for instance, and they don't have the outlet for that hardwired natural instinct, they start to go berserk. And it's understandable, but a mutt is very laid back. They are combinations of two or more dogs, sometimes three, four, five, six different breeds go into one mutt. So what you get there is you get a dog whose main purpose and desire is to please you and to do whatever it is you want to do. So if you like to go jogging, they'll come jogging with you. If you like to sit on the couch and watch TV, they'll do that too, happily. So they're very attuned to your lifestyle and very adaptable. And really, they're the all-American dog. You couldn't do better. It's like the canine melting pot. Getting a mutt couldn't be easier. It's as easy as going to your local animal shelter. And if you don't know where that is, you just Google animal shelter and your zip code, or you go to petfinder.com, which is a wonderful website that has a um, database of all shelters across the country. You know, dogs become homeless just like people do, and it's through no fault of their own, really. Um, so we can actually reduce homelessness. It's, it becomes kind of a political statement and a real social good.